Okay, real quick before we continue, I wanted to give you the latest weather update here from uh, Caretaker Arrow in Ohio. <clears throat> As you can see, we've got snow. For me personally, I like it. I'm a big fan of snow and uh, I, I really like it uh, when I have things to do like working on a plane and producing videos because I don't have to worry about doing any kind of yard work and that frees up more time for me to do what I need to do here in the shop. But uh, this is actually a nice bright sunny day, which is rare. Uh, I think this is the first bright sunny day we've had in probably a month. And I'm sure it's hard to tell, but we've got about, uh, we got about 18 or so inches of snow on the ground. And uh, this is the first nice day we've had in quite a while, up until uh, about well, probably sometime overnight last night it finally stopped snowing. And this is the first real break that we've had in about two and a half weeks of continual snowfall. So there it is, for those of you who care. That is the, uh, the latest weather update from Caretaker Aero here in uh, January of uh, 2010. Okay, now, let's get back over here to the fuselage. And this may be a little bit of a surprise to you. But there it is. Now you may be wondering, wow, just a second ago I saw the two fuselage sides being built on a countertop and now blam, here we are with what looks like an almost completed deal. Well, unfortunately um, what had happened was about the time that I got those other couple of video clips, clips finished, um, I made a decision to uh, discontinue making the Hint video series. And therefore, as I continued to build the fuselage, I did not take the time to uh, videotape my work in progress as I did it. And over time, I was fortunate enough to continue to sell the other Hint videos that I had made. And I started to get emails from customers asking me, what the next video was going to be and when it was going to be available. So I had a change of heart and I decided to go ahead and continue on with making the Hint video series. So what I'm trying to do now with this video is to get everybody caught up to uh, where I am at this point in the fuselage construction. Now I do have a lot of still pictures that I had taken uh, throughout the build process and those will be uh, intertwined with the various videos um, as we go. But uh, this video here is just like a, an overall overview, if you will, to uh, get everybody back up to speed to where I am right now. Uh, I had already done like a 30, 30 minute segment of video but for whatever reason, I could not get that video off of the camera and onto the computer. I'm assuming it's because it was so long of a segment. So now I'm going to do little short segments. So this is going to be chopped up into multiple segments instead of one long, drawn-out speech, which I guess could be a good thing. So let me uh, get started here at the beginning, and we will continue on with building the fuselage. Now, as you can obviously tell, my fuselage is on the floor, and this where it sits right now is exactly where I have been building it. This thing hasn't moved off of the floor since I put the two sides down here and started putting in the cross pieces. Um, I didn't do a jig, just like with uh, the other bigger pieces of the airplane, I didn't build a jig. I just don't think it's necessary. That, that's a personal opinion. There is absolutely nothing wrong with building with a jig. Um, I have no problems with building with a jig. I just chose not to use it. So this is the process that I had used and I think it has worked out very, very well. At least for me, it has worked out incredibly well. So here we go. Step number one. First thing to do is to lay down your nice straight reference line and I had done that very simply with masking tape just laid right out on the floor and I used the uh, seam between the floor tiles as um, as a reference to lay the tape down 
and I just lay down masking tape all the way down the length of the fuselage. Very simple, just stick it right to the floor. All the way down, okay? All right. The next thing that I had done, well, let's see, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I have a lot to talk about, so I may jump back and forth a little bit here. But what I had done, since I'm not using a jig, these long arons, um, the front of the airplane here is as wide as the plane gets. It doesn't get any wider than this here. And as you come back, once you get past roughly the... Uh, front seat back station. From here back they start to taper to get to the tail. So what I had elected to do was to start in the front and put in a couple of cross members, the top and bottom cross members at, at the various stations. You can see the one down at the bottom and I have this one here and then there's one here and there's the ash piece and as I worked my way back, I would put a couple of cross pieces in, clamp the sides together, let it dry overnight. Then come back, add in a couple more top and bottom pieces. This piece, this piece under here, this piece up here. Put them together, clamp them together, let them dry overnight. And as you do that, as you work your way back, the lengths of those pieces obviously change. They get smaller and smaller as you go back. So you are able to gradually walk your way back and gradually walk these longer on sides closer and closer together until you get to the tail. And I thought it worked out very well. So, oh, okay, great. Now I'm getting a low battery indicator. So. This has already been seven minutes worth of just incredibly entertaining video. So I'm going to stop here, recharge this battery, and hopefully download this segment onto my computer. Sorry for the interruption, but I'll be back shortly. I wanted to include this picture here between video clips just to show that um, this is how I got started with putting the fuselage sides together. I just laid it um, upside down on the floor and uh, I started uh, clamping it together at the front and working my, back, working my way back to the tail. And I'll, I'll get into this more, but I just wanted to throw this simple picture in here just to, just to show you how I got started with mine. So before I started attaching any of these uh, cross supports from one side of the fuselage to the other, what I did was locate the center of the support and mark a reference line exactly on center. And I have these on all of my individual pieces. You can see there is another one. And I just showed you the one on top and even these pieces here, they all have um, a reference line in the center of the wood and what that is for obviously is for the plumb bob and basically what will happen is if you um, if you find the center of your piece and you hang your plumb bob on that line and it comes down to a corresponding line on a bottom cross member and then that of course lines up with your line on the floor then that will help keep everything nice and square. You can also achieve the same thing uh, by using a carpenter square here along the side and along the top to keep things from from going askew this way but what I had found to be very uh, useful and easy to do is just to have a line on your top cross member, a line on your bottom cross member, drop your, hang your plumb bob down and uh, keep those two lines 
these two pencil lines uh, lined up with the plumb bob and have the plumb bob lined up with the mark, your mark on the floor with your, uh, your tape. And that's pretty much what I've got going on here. You just, you saw the line that's underneath the string which represents the center of this piece and that line drops down which you can't see it now because the plumb bob's in the way but there's a corresponding line back here and that lines up with the line on the floor. So that's how I did it. And again, I have to get up here. Again, you work from, or at least I did, I worked from the front of the plane toward the back of the plane, maintaining those, maintaining those plumb bob lines as I worked my way back. So every time I put in a cross member or a couple of cross members, I would check it with the plumb bob from top to bottom to the line on the floor. And then, like I had said before, I'd do a few, check it with the plumb bob, glue it all in place, clamp it, let it dry overnight, and then move back, do a couple more uh, top and bottom pieces, various locations, and uh, check them with the plumb bob, and then uh, clamp them, make sure they're correct, and move back. And as you continue to move back, the fuselage will taper on its own, and uh, you don't, you're not trying to wrestle with this whole big long thing to, to get that taper. You, you work on it a little bit at a time, a section at a time, and you work your way back. And that actually worked out, worked out very well. I was very happy with it. It was very easy to do. And um, all of that is done with the fuselage upside down. So these top longerons, as you know, are uh, flat and I had initially had the fuselage flipped upside down so that the top longer ons were on the floor um, and then I went ahead and, and put in the, the the cross supports top and bottom plumb bombed them used a plumb bob on them with the reference lines in the center squared everything up clamped them worked from front to back uh, let me see let me come back here and talk about the, the back end here for a minute. And what I had chosen to do, and again, this will be a little more clear for you when you see the pictures, and I'll narrate those a little bit more to explain it. But once I got back here, these longer ons come together, and you have to cut this angle here. What I had chosen to do was to use a, uh, a hand miter saw. And I brought these together and clamped them, and then I basically just eyeballed this, this angle, put my saw on uh, the, the longer ons that are clamped and just went ahead and cut down through them. And I did that on the bottom and on the top. And it worked out pretty well. You, you want to make sure that you cut down nice and square. You don't want to come down at some kind of an angle one way or the other because what will happen is you may, it, like in this instance here, there's really no gap here. And if, if, this, if, if your cut's not cut right, you'll have no gap on one side and you'll have a gap on the other. And you don't want that because in order to then to close up that gap, you kind of have to twist the, the longer on so you have no gap and no gap if you don't cut it square. So that takes a little bit of concentration, a little bit of effort, but I just took mine, I made my cuts a little at a time and I kept checking it and if it started to vary a little bit I would come back and file it if I had to or whatever just to get it square and I did that top and bottom but what had happened was when I did the top I had made the cut too wide Let's see if I can get this in focus I had made the cut too wide and uh, I basically had to pinch the longer ons to get them to touch, but that made uh, that distorted this tail a little bit. It, it kind of bowed it a little bit. I wasn't happy, so I just went ahead and filled it in with a piece of eighth inch plywood. And this piece of plywood runs the length of that cut. Um, it's just a, a fix to a mistake, basically, is all that was. Another. Uh, pitfall that I kind of fell into, the uh, longer ons came already cut one inch by one inch, but I had to cut them to length and what I had chosen to do was to put all four of the longer ons together 
and even them up on one end and then uh, on the other end mark the line uh, for the length and then I, I cut them all at the same time on the uh, compound miter saw so they were all exactly the same length. The problem with doing it that way is I found out after I cut them because I wasn't thinking the top long rounds are straight the bottom long rounds are curved and uh, they're both attached to this vertical piece on the uh, that makes up part of the firewall so you have a nice straight piece coming back and you have a curved piece coming back so by the time you get back here to the tail this bottom piece is shorter than the top but it worked out well because what I had done was after I had gotten the longer ons joined together got these two joined and got the bottom two joined together the only thing I had to do with my tail post was just fit it up underneath the longer ones these are these are the longer ones that stuck out and it came down and then I was able to take the, the bottom ones and just butt them up against it so the the shorter long one the shorter lower ones come up here and butt against it the longer top ones come all the way across the top so this uh, what is this the tail post just butts up against here comes down all the way and then these just come in and butt up against it and this measurement from here down to the uh, front is what's on the prints so let me uh, go ahead and download this again and plan my next segment hold on oh man I almost blew something incredibly important one thing that I forgot to mention was when you have the sides of the fuselage um, on the floor, on the bench, wherever you're building them, you have to keep the front end, the firewall end of these sides even with one another. Now I just, since I had it on the floor, I just used one of the cracks uh, between the tiles as my reference line to keep the two sides even. But uh, you can use a fence or, or anything like that, but you have to keep the, the sides even with one another at the front. You don't want one sticking out forward or aft more than the other, so to speak. So that's step two after you get your center line down, is to make sure that the ends are even. All right. This picture here shows what I was trying to get across in the previous clip. The... Uh, board on the bottom here with the pencil line that pencil line is represents the center of that uh, piece of wood and it corresponds obviously with the center line that's marked on the floor now the plumb bob is hung from a, a another support piece that's up on top out of the picture view but uh, that piece of wood has a pencil line marked on its center and then you hang the plumb bob off of that and you get the plumb bob to line up with the line on the floor as well so that center of that top board and the center of this bottom board that you see here they're both uh, in alignment with the center line on the floor rendering uh, that section of the fuselage square here's another picture further back on the fuselage again <coughs> the uh, board the center board I'm sorry the uh, the center line of the board that's up on top is out of view but that's what the plumb bob is hanging off of the string of the plumb bob lays on that center mark and then it hangs down and corresponds to the line on the floor representing the center and then um, it is clamped in place and, al and allowed to dry overnight now this particular location does not have a cross member here in place laying on the floor but it 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 would and it would it would be uh, handled the same way with the center line and uh laid into place and clamped this is no more than a, a picture showing the um one of the ash pieces for the landing gear in place on top the line uh just to the left where the uh, the uh, ash piece meets the fuselage that was that's just a locator line that just I got that mark off of the print it's so many inches back from the firewall that is not a center line and then of course I just clamp it in place and work my way back here's a picture of the basic fuselage <coughs> not all of the uh, members obviously are in place I believe all of the cross members are in place, but obviously none of the, none of the uh, diagonals are in yet. And you can see that I've got the clamps basically middle of the fuselage, 
back toward the tail. Those are the newest cross members. The ones up forward more have already been clamped and glued. And then this picture here is just another angle of the same thing. <coughs> Again, the uh, the cross members joining the sides left and right are in place and uh, none of the diagonals are put in yet but you can see how easy it, it is just to walk from the front of the fuselage and work your way back and maintain the uh, plumb bobs and the center lines for those top and bottom pieces and uh, the fuselage will, will curve naturally on its own Hey everybody, just wanted to say real quick again, thanks for checking out my YouTube videos and uh, just a couple of real quick tidbits before you leave. If you'd be so kind as to check out my GoFundMe page, the link is down in the description of these videos. For those of you who uh, find it in your heart to uh, donate for this new cause of mine, I've got another project going on and uh, there's some really cool things I'd like to do with this aircraft um, and again that's all explained in my GoFundMe but um, if you find move en moved enough to go do that and donate um, I've got this, this horizontal stabilizer skin and uh, donors will get their name put on this skin and ultimately when this gets filled and uh, the aircraft gets finished this is going to be hung up on the wall of honor in my hangar just a little uh, a little bit of recognition for those donors who helped make the project a reality. Another thing too is I'm sure you've noticed that even this video that I'm making right now is of the same or worse quality than the video that you just watched and that's because believe it or not this camera is the exact same camera that I filmed the original hint videos with. So uh, I just wanted to point that out. I'm not really sure why but uh, I know the video quality lacks but hopefully the information within is uh, is worth something. And the other thing that I want to mention real quick is again these are little snippets from my Hint video DVDs so a lot of these individual clips just kind of come to an abrupt end. Um, that's just the way it is when I'm, I'm trying to rip these DVDs apart and, and re-edit them into small little segments and they, they just kind of end weird at, at times. But that's it. That's all I wanted to say. And again, thanks. And I hope you'll come back, check out my channel, and uh, see if there are any new videos and updates. All right. I'll talk to you then. See you.